Hello, Pastor Sam here, and welcome to Miracles Still Happen. I'm so glad you joined me today on the program. We are about to celebrate in this country July the 4th, and we know what that means. But do you believe, like I do, that America has a godly heritage? I really and truly believe that this nation was born out of the very heart of God. And I believe that God wants to do something in and through America that will impact the world in these last days. But I hear God calling to his church, telling us to go back to the basic fundamental doctrines and the Christian principles and righteous principles upon which this country was founded. So the message today is just entitled, God Bless America. So would you open your heart and allow the Lord to speak to you today and then prepare yourselves to do what God has called us to do in these last days. The Bible says, if my people, and that's talking about believers now, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, uh, and will heal their land. Isn't it interesting that our vice president, Vice President Pence, uh, recently made that statement as a public affirmation of his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I believe that God has prepared us to be a blessing to the world, but it starts with those of us who are believers uh, bringing our lives into perfect alignment with the Word of God. Uh, today I have a special guest uh, or gift I would like to send to you, and if you'll just simply call me at 804-744-8881, I want to send it to you absolutely free. So let's get ready now and go into that service where I'm speaking on the subject, God Bless America. Start this a little bit different. Oh, beautiful. For heroes. In the liberating strife. Who more than themselves. Their own country love. Make up the glory. 
bless you, everybody, as you're seated in His presence. I want you to turn with me this morning to the book of Psalms. We're going to read Psalm 56, verses 9 and 11. While you're turning there, let me tell you that there's a reason why that the words, In God We Trust, are inscribed uh, not only on many monuments, uh, not only in public places, but you will find that expression on our currency. And there's a reason for it. And here's the reason. It came directly from Scripture. In Psalm 56 and verse 9, the Bible says, When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. Verse 11 in God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land of the pilgrim's pride, land where our fathers died, from every mountainside let freedom ring. Were the founding fathers who worked on our Constitution self-serving opportunists, or does America really have a godly heritage? You realize that 52 of the 55 founding fathers were born-again, blood-washed, evangelical Christians. God has ordained the very existence of our nation. If you believe that, say a big amen. amen. Most of us are familiar with Patrick Henry because he said, give me liberty or give me death. But what many people do not know is that he also said, and I quote, it cannot be emphasized too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians. Not all religions, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. John Adams made this statement as president, the highest glory of the American Revolution was this. It connected the principles of Christianity with the principles of civil government. John Jay was the first Supreme Court justice, the chief justice. And he said, Providence has given to our people the choice of their rulers. It is the duty as well as the privilege of a Christian nation to select and prefer Christians as its rulers. Our Constitution came from the Bible. The reason that our government has worked as well as it has is because it came right out of the Bible. A political science professor at the University of Houston did an exhaustive study on our founding fathers in an effort to determine uh, and discover where their ideas and concepts in government came from. And for 10 years, his team studied 15 thousand documents, and they found that 94% of all the quotes of the founding fathers came right out of the Bible. They quoted the Bible more than anything or anybody else. Their ideas and concepts for government came right out of the Word of God. The three branches of our government with the Constitution guaranteeing separation of power came from Isaiah 33, 22 and Jeremiah chapter 12. Tax exemption for churches comes from Ezra 7 and 24. Many times the founding fathers would discuss biblical concepts from God's Word on the floor of the House of, the Represent House of Representatives and the Senate. Sometimes they would stop and literally get on their knees and begin to pray and ask God Almighty for divine direction. Oh, how I wish that would happen again today. 
Many congressmen and Supreme Court justices were scholars of God's Word. And after they had discussed these biblical concepts and prayed, many times they were incorporated into the laws of our nation. You know, some people think that it is unconstitutional to pray in public schools. Can I share something with you that will blow your mind? Back in 1844, there was a public school in Philadelphia that was teaching a course on morality. And they refused to use the Bible as their textbook. It went all the way to the Supreme Court. And in 1844, this is what the Supreme Court said about that case. The purest principles of morality can be derived only from the same source to which a Christian goes to find his faith, the Bible. When Bible reading and prayer were taken out of the public schools in our generation, it was a total disregard for over 200 years of legal precedence set by the Supreme Court of our land. Our founding fathers never intended to separate Christian principles from government and from our public life. Can you say a big amen again? Amen. You know, all we hear today from secular humanists is separation of church and state. In a recent poll, 67% of Americans thought that separation of church and state was in the First Amendment. This concept came from a letter to a Baptist congregation by Thomas Jefferson assuring them that there would be no state church such as there was in England, the Anglican church. President Jefferson stated that there was indeed a wall of separation between church and state, but that it was a one directional wall that keeps the government from running the church but assures that there will always be Christian principles in the government. Our country testifies to our faith in God in almost all of its public buildings and monuments. Did you know that in Washington, D.C., the Washington Monument is the highest structure in the District of Columbia. There can never be another structure that is higher than the Washington Monument. It is 550 feet uh, uh, tall, 555 feet tall, and at the top of the Washington Monument, inscribed on the aluminum cap, are two words in Latin. No one can see these words because even though these words have been there for many years, they are inscribed atop the monument facing the heavens. Two unnoticed words placed at the highest point over what is the most powerful city in the most successful nation in the world. What do these two words in Latin, composed of just four syllables and seven letters, say? The two words are praise God. From atop this magnificent granite and marble structure, visitors may take in the beautiful panoramic view of the city with its division into four major segments. From this vantage point, it is easy to see that the original designer designed a perfect cross imposed upon the landscape with the White House to the north, the Jefferson Memorial to the south, the Capitol to the east, and the Lincoln Memorial to the west. Within the monument itself are 898 steps and 50 landings. As one climbs the steps and pauses at the landings, the memorial stones share a message. On the 12th landing is a prayer offered by the city of Baltimore. On the 20th, a memorial presented by Chinese Christians. On the 24th, a presentation 
made by Sunday school children from New York and Philadelphia, quoting Proverbs 10, 7, Luke 18, 16, and Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. On July the 4th, 1848, they dedicated the Washington Monument and the cornerstone was laid. There were many items in the cornerstone, but among them was a Bible presented by the Bible Society. I want you to know that in this nation of ours, there are many reminders that this nation was established on faith in the Word of the living God. Hallelujah. And it is time for us to get back to those righteous principles that are set forth in the Word of God, a lodestone, a guiding star for this nation of ours. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. But if somehow in these last days we abandon our faith in God and just become a secular nation and forget our past, our rich spiritual heritage, we will have the epitaph on the tombstone of this nation. The wicked are turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. But I don't want to forget God. In fact, I want to call this nation back to God. I want us to seek the Lord until he reigns righteousness down on the United States of America. I want us to seek God until a Holy Ghost revival sweeps the length and breadth of this land and burns out of control and spreads like a wind-driven prairie wildfire into every community and hamlet and town and village and mega uh, megapolis in the United States of America. God send revival from center to circumference to America. It's time for us to pray right now. Will you believe God with me as we pray together? Pray this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for blessing America as you have blessed no other nation. I'm grateful for your goodness and for your grace. But I repent for the sins of our nation. Forgive us for the sin of abortion. Forgive us for the sin of gay marriage. Forgive us because we've strayed from the principles of your word and send revival to America. Sweep thousands and thousands of precious souls into the kingdom of God in Jesus name. Amen. I am praying for a revival that will sweep the nation and burn out of control like a wind driven prairie wildfire. Will you agree with me? It starts by every believer finding his backbone and saying, I'm going to take a stand. After you give your heart and life to Christ, you need to find a church that believes the whole Bible. And I want to recommend to you Victory Tabernacle. Why not join me this Sunday at 10 o'clock right here at Victory Tabernacle here in the Richmond area for two full hours of praise and worship ministry from the Word of God and always a time together in his presence around the altar. Don't forget that the last Sunday in every month is our Miracle Sunday, which means we have an additional service where we pray for the sick, we pray for people to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we are seeing God confirm his word with mighty signs and wonders and miracles. That's uh, last Sunday of every month. For more information, you can go to our website at victorytab.org. And remember that all of our services are live streamed. You can find out about that on our website. During the middle of the week, you can find us here in our Family Enrichment Night service where we have something exciting, fun, and relevant for every member of the family and every age group. Royal Rangers for the boys, missionettes for the girls, a dynamic youth program for teens called Battle Cry, even a ministry to college and career age young people called The Vine. I'm teaching in the main sanctuary. Our Hispanic congregation will meet in the chapel and you're going to love Wednesday night. It starts at seven o'clock and at 8.30, 
we're walking out the door. Also, I want you to know that when you go to our website, that's victorytab.org, we have a 24-hour radio internet network called Battle Cry. And you'll love it because we have gospel preaching, Bible teaching. Uh, we have some of the greatest prophecy teachers that you'll ever hear on our schedule. Also, great music, music that young people love, Use it, uh, music for people that are my generation, and testimonies. So check it out. When you go to victorytab.org, you can check out Victory Battle Cry, and it's... Uh, 24-7. So enjoy it and be blessed. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of our program today. I have a gift for you. And if you'll call me now at 804-744-8881, I'll send it to you absolutely free. Again, that number is 804-744-8881. Thank you so much for being a part of the program. May the Lord bless you. And until we're together again, just like this around the Word of God, this is Pastor Sam reminding you that here at Victory Tabernacle, faith brings a victory and miracles still happen. Here at Victory Tabernacle, we have something for the entire family. On Sunday mornings in our 10 a.m. service and also in our Wednesday night service at 7 p.m., we have our full nursery for toddlers and infants. On Sunday mornings, we have Kids Quest for children 12 and under. That's in our 10 a.m. service on Sunday morning. On Wednesday nights, we have Royal Rangers for the boys and Missionettes for the girls. Also, our youth ministry for ages 13 to 18 has their own service in the Youth Ministry Center. Our college and career age ministry, The Vine, is for those that are 19 through 25. They hold their service in the Vine Room on the second floor of the sanctuary. Our ladies ministry and men's ministry is a thriving ministries that involve the entire church, so make sure you get more details on our website. And finally, our prime timers ministry for ages 55 and older, a thriving ministry that has activities every month for you to get involved in. So make sure you go by victorytab.org and check out each of these ministries that we have to offer your entire family.